Hello and welcome back to Lunch Break Heroes. Today we're talking about the three act structure in Dungeons and Dragons. You may or may not know this, but pretty much every movie or TV show that you watch or book that you read is built the same way. Almost all of them use similar story structures dressed up in a bunch of different ways. One of the most common and most familiar is the three act structure. Even if you've never heard of it, trust me when I say that you're intimately familiar with it. It's everywhere, underlying pretty much every story that you've experienced. Aristotle brought the three-act structure to people's attention in his work Poetics, published in 335 BC. He defined a whole story as that which has a beginning, a middle, and an end. He was a lot wordier than that, but that's what it boiled down to. Beginning, middle, end. Three parts to a story. It seems obvious, and that's because we've all grown up around the idea. But not a whole lot of people know exactly how those pieces go together and why. So how are stories constructed in this way, and how can you apply it to your Dungeons & Dragons game? Before we get into that though, I want to flesh out what an act is, or rather, what it isn't. Folks who are new to storytelling and the three-act structure might think that certain things must happen within an act. And if those things don't happen, then the act isn't right. It isn't complete. I must introduce the protagonist in Act 1. There must be a conflict in Act 2. There must be a resolution in Act 3. Now these things are true most of the time, but accepting them as gospel can blind you to what acts really are. I'm going to steal a page from the angry GM and paraphrase his analogy because I really liked it. An act is like a room in your house or your apartment. Take a look at the room around you. What do you see? There's stuff inside the room, most likely. A couch or bed, maybe a TV. You, for certain. But what if I told you that your room didn't exist? That it isn't a thing? Kind of a weird thought, right? When the construction workers built your house or apartment, they didn't build a room. A room isn't a thing that you can put together. What they did is they put up the walls, laid down the floor, and put the ceiling over top. And by doing so, the room came into being. Take away the walls, the ceiling, and the floor, those transitions between the inside and the outside, and the room ceases to exist. A room is a space defined by its transitions, and so is the act of a story. An act of a story isn't created by what it contains any more than your room is created by what it contains. An act of a story is defined by transitions within the story. These transitions are called plot points. Plot points mark major changes within that story. The 3 act structure contains two major plot points. One between the first and second act, and another between the second and third act. The first plot point pushes the protagonist into their adventure or journey. It's a turning point in the story where the characters leave behind the status quo and their lives are forever changed. This is when Luke Skywalker discovers his aunt and uncle have been killed by the Empire, and he decides to go become a Jedi Knight. Everything before that plot point was Act 1. What follows is Act 2, where we see most of the story unfold. The second plot point is another turning point for the characters, where they make a decision that propels them towards the climax, or the final confrontation. Prior to this moment, they could walk away, but they're choosing to act. And by choosing to act, their lives are once again altered. This is when Luke Skywalker decides to join the Rebel Alliance and fly an X-Wing against the Death Star. Everything prior to that plot point was Act 2, and what follows is Act 3, where we experience the climax of our story and then a resolution. There's other smaller plot points that go in between these two which help keep the story moving and interesting, but these two are the major ones that break up the three-act structure. Before I go into a lot of detail about how you can employ the three-act structure in D&D, if you want to see it on full display, check out the latest original one-shot from Lunch Break Heroes, Feast of the Damned. This adventure finds your party invited to be the guests of a local noble family whose intentions aren't so noble. Do you have your wits about you? Can you survive the night? Are you predator or prey? Fight your way through hedge mazes, libraries, underground tunnels, and more, all in a bid to break the curse that holds the Sinclair family in its sway. Get it over on Patreon for as little as a dollar, 
or over at lunchbreakheroes.com where it's on sale today only. All right, now that I've blathered on about what an act of a story is, let's see how you can use plot points to create three acts and add a really satisfying feel to your campaign. At its most basic, your first major plot point is going to be the one that sets your party on their adventure. This could be accepting a job to go adventuring in the local dungeon, or deciding to follow up on that poster of a missing person, or whatever contrived reason you have for going on an adventure. But if the characters in your game are professional adventurers, and adventure is the status quo, you may want something a bit more exotic. Let's say they're on an adventure like normal, then your first plot point can be when things don't go according to plan, or go completely awry and the characters need to make a choice that alters that status quo. The bad guy shows up at the end of the MacGuffin hunt and steals it out from under them, or the king that hired them is assassinated and they've been framed. Some big event that changes the trajectory of the characters' lives. Everything before that plot point was Act 1. What follows is Act 2. The first act of a D&D campaign can be really short, less than one session if you're taking a basic approach. But even if you're doing something more complex, your first act shouldn't be overly long. I'd say two or three sessions max. Your second major plot point is going to come much later. It's when the characters are finally strong enough to go up against the villain. They've taken their lumps, experienced setbacks and hardships. They've made friends and allies, and they've lost some along the way. After all of that, they're given a choice. Walk away or make one final stand. Everything before this plot point was Act 2, and everything that follows is Act 3, where all the fluff of the campaign gets pushed aside and the characters rush toward the final climactic confrontation. And that's a three-act structure for a campaign. But that's not all there is to this, because unlike a two-hour movie, a campaign can be spread out across several months to well over a year. You can't have a satisfying D&D experience with just two plot points over that amount of time. So that's why you break a campaign down into individual adventures or quests, each with their own three-act structure. Think of a Dungeons & Dragons campaign like a season of television where individual adventures are like episodes. The campaign and the season have overarching plots that get moved forward a little bit with each adventure and episode. But each adventure and episode also have their own self-contained stories where the three-act structure can be used to help keep up a satisfying pace for everybody at the table. Let's take a look at a fictional campaign for a moment. The overarching story here is that the villain has stolen the MacGuffin of power, and the characters have to get it back. Plot point one was where the theft of the MacGuffin occurred while the adventurers were trying to find it. Plot point two is the decision to storm the villain's lair and get it back before he can destroy the world with it. Between these two plot points, which are separated by months of real time, you have lots of smaller adventures where the characters can gather information, tools, and allies to help them in their final fight against the villain. Now let's look at one of those small adventures and see how the three-act structure comes into play. The characters hear of a washed-up ex-adventurer who used to work for the villain and might know some secrets. They go looking for her and come upon her village, only to find that it's been ransacked by bandits. After searching, they figure out that she went off to get revenge on the bandits. Plot point one is the characters choosing to follow her trail. While following the ex-adventurer's trail, they come to find that she's been overpowered and captured by the bandits. So the characters need to regroup and figure out how to attack the bandits and free the ex-adventurer. Plot point two is where they've finished their preparations and decide to put their plan into action, resulting in a battle between them and the bandits. Act one was our introduction to the goal of finding the ex-adventurer and the introduction to the town and the discovery of the problem that she's missing. Act two was the discovery of even more problems. The ex-adventurer is being held captive, and the bandits are probably pretty dangerous. We also have a group activity of planning an attack. Act 3 comes after the decision to attack. It's the actual conflict with the bandits, leading to the resolution where the ex-adventurer is rescued from captivity and gives the characters the information that they need. Lots of small adventures like this one, which each contribute to pushing the overarching plot forward, can really make for a fun and engaging campaign with a familiar feel thanks to the three-act structure. Like I said, we're all intimately familiar with it since we're so immersed in it with nearly every 
book, movie, or show that we take in. While something like the three-act structure can help make for engaging and memorable campaigns, always remember to be flexible. You aren't planning a set story here like you would with a movie or a novel. RPGs are collaborative storytelling exercises, and the input of the players may very well set your grand plans on an entirely different tangent than you initially thought. So you need to stay on your toes about what plot points you can introduce and when. But you're a dungeon master, and improvisation is just kind of what we do, isn't it? Now because you stayed to the end of this video, be sure to use the coupon code FEAST during checkout for half off Feast of the Damned at lunchbreakheroes.com, and don't forget to subscribe.